Hello, this is TechMan88, and here I've got a pretty efficient vine farm. Now, if you don't know much about vine farms, I guess there's basically two schools of thought on this. Is one is that you would uh, have vines far off in the distance so that you don't pick them up, and then just dispense shears to yourself every once in a while. Uh, but I use a different method that I've seen on ice farms. So make sure I'm in survival mode, and so. At this point, your shears would be basically used up, and you're going to run across that, and you're going to pick up a new shear, and the old shear is going to be dispensed, or uh, it's going to be shot off by an arrow. So then the next time you come around, you can place the, uh, the shears on it. So yeah, you would just sit here and do this like a lot of other vine farms. And I guess another change that I made, um, I did some adjustments for 1.13. So I used slime down here instead of uh, soul sand because there is a chance that items can get stuck on the soul sand. A uh, very small chance that they'll land here, the player doesn't collect them, and they'll just get stuck because the soul sand is a little bit shorter. Another thing is that the soul sand here, it'll be a water source block and that'll push you up and you don't want that. There's also a useful new block added in 1.13, which is the sea pickle. And you couldn't do this before. Uh, there's not many blocks with a small hitbox so that like if an item lands on top of it, um, like a, a fence gate here, like you can land an item right on top of it and then it'll get just stuck there. And the player is gonna be, his, I, I, his inventory is gonna be full so he can't pick it up. So yeah, either open fence gates or sea pickles like that will work. Um, flower pots, they don't work. They get uh, moved away by water. Uh, sea turtle eggs, they will work, but I think those are a little bit too tedious to, uh, to acquire. So another thing I did a bit differently than other farms I've seen is that I have two different uh, laps you can do. That's what I call them. So when you go over this pressure plate right here, another thing it'll do is just switch this water stream so you go the other direction. And that's just going to push me around the back, and it'll do a loop behind the thing. It'll come along... Uh, go back, loop this way, and then, yeah, when I come back the next time, it's just going to swap back to the first position. So the reason that I have these two sides of the thing and just one central refilling station is because I thought it would be nicer just to have everything centralized, and it turns out that this works pretty well. So this is basically configured so that you'll basically never break your shears. It uses up just enough durability. I did all the calculations. Um, usually break two blocks per, um, per block that you move. And I forget exactly how long this is, but it's uh, about 20 segments that are five long. And that just worked about out about right. So I'll go into survival and run it now and just show that this gets down to the uh, the corrector ability. So I'm using a, a clicking script to, to do this. Just holding down the right and left mouse button, which uh, that places the item in the item frame and also uh, clears the vines. So I just went along this row before, and you can see that a lot of them aren't quite grown. And normally you wouldn't get the uh, you wouldn't be able to break to every block that you move. Like usually you break about like 1.5 just because of the way vine growth works. But anyway, I'll probably time lapse the rest of this.
So yeah, the, uh, the shears are down to pretty low durability now, and now I'm just going to be placing them into the item frame and getting a new pair. And it's just going to send me the other way to do the other side. So once you've gone through this a couple times, uh, most of the bottom vines that you're targeting, they're going to be gone. And it's going to use up less durability on the shears at that point. But I think that's okay. You probably have a nice iron supply. There's really great iron farms in 1.14 and 1.13 and below. So I developed this mostly just guess and check. I had tried other designs before this, which I might show more later. Uh, like I, I had one design where I just had one pretty long area to, to go through. But there's a problem the first time you would, uh, you would break your shears. Uh, so the way I was testing this and like just trying to optimize the entire design was I would run a command like this. So yeah, that, uh, that just clears it all out. Then I can just run a command like this. That's a five minute command. And it'll just, yeah, it'll just run the command for five minutes and tell me how many vines grew. Then I can use that to get a rate of vine growth. Basically, how many minutes it takes to grow a single vine. And if you read the wiki on this, you get a result like every, I think it's every two minutes it should grow a vine if you just read it, but I think it's, it's quite wrong. So with that, uh, with that number, uh, 60 vines out of 275 blocks in five minutes, then I can just, uh, I just took Google and divided five minutes by 60 divided by 275. And that's 22 minutes for every vine growth, which is much slower than the wiki says. Um, but in this case, I've got five layers and I want two of them to be grown because I can harvest basically two as I'm moving along there. So I just multiply two, time, two divided by five by uh, 22, and I get 9.16 minutes. So basically, ideally, you would take 9.16 minutes to move through the entire circuit. But as it turns out, uh, to get your sears down to minimum durability, that's about only three minutes or so. So I have the two circuits. This is going to take three on this side, on the left. And then this one on the right is going to take another three minutes. So about six minutes, it's going to complete the circuit. And yeah, the next times that you go around, you're not going to uh, use up your shears completely. Uh, you could improve it, I guess, by adding another, another wing to this. Like you could definitely go up pretty easily in 1.13 with bubble columns or whatever. But I don't think that's really worth it. This will give you plenty of vines. But just as... Uh, some sort of record for this as you're running it. So the first times you go through, most of the vines are going to be there and it's going to be using up most of the durability. And then as they, uh, as less vines are grown, it's just going to be using up less of that. So that's kind of nice to have a kind of log for, for what happened in your farm. And you can use that to, to like improve it, to debug it. So I was trying to demonstrate why it's important to put the, the old shears in an item frame, just get a new uh, pair of them. But I might have been wrong about what I was thinking. So I'll go into survival mode. And yeah, what I was thinking is that if you broke one of these vines, uh, then it's possible you could break your shears and catch the vine in the slot that you want your shears. So yeah, actually there, there it actually worked. So I, I just have a command to give myself a low durability pair of shears. And yeah, I gotta get rid of that. So yeah, you want, uh, you want this slot right here. You want that always free, so you're free to pick up a new shears. But the problem is if you pick up a vine, uh, then you won't be able to pick that up. So let me try it again. Yeah, there we go, that did work. So that, would be a problem. It's kind of rare that it would happen, but it does happen. And I wanted this to be like very AFKable so you don't break your, like you don't mess it up shortly into the AFK run. But I did learn something new that I didn't know from these tests. So like I've got a, I've got these shears that are just about to be used up. It's actually not going to drop a, an item when I kill these vines here. 
which was why I was confused at first. I thought it would always drop the item, but apparently, maybe this is a change. But yeah, when you when you break the uh, when you break the tool, it's not going to drop the item. Now I'll go through like the dimensions and technical aspects of the farm, like the redstone and stuff, even though it's not too complicated. Um, so like here, these are the five wide segments. So there's four going this way. Then it does this loop right here where it has one ice block and then uh, just moves along like this. And then, uh, yeah, just does the other, uh, does the same thing on the other side. And then again, four, uh, four segments again on this side. So it's nice and symmetrical. And there's a three segment gap right here in the middle. And you could make that smaller, but then it wouldn't be symmetrical or it would just not line up as well. So it's pretty nice to build something like this because the ice blocks are always aligned with each other. Really, I think pretty easy to get the dimensions right. The shears dispenser is pretty standard, but I don't see a lot of people using them. I think people use them on ice farms because ice is probably a lot more useful. Uh, but yeah, it just, it has an item frame, reads it with a comparator. It's off when there's no item, but when there's an item, it turns on. And that's just gonna first dispense or drop a new shears and then shoot an arrow from this dispenser. And you'll probably never have to refill that. That's why there's no additional storage. Uh, but up here, there's a lot of storage for shears, just in case you wanna AFK this for a very long time. And then here, there's a dropper that just picks up the, the shears and just puts them in this chest. So yeah, those are all the shears, shears I just placed in there. And then uh, down here, this is where the alternator thing goes, the switcher. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. The pressure plate is above this ice block here. And these uh, these sticky pistons, when they push forward, they're going to activate these two sticky pistons here. And that's just going to alternate the two blocks. So pretty simple. And you want this to happen before you get to this area, just in case of client lag. On this part right here, I kind of screwed up the dimensions. So I would probably move all this stuff here, just move it a couple blocks in this direction. Um, yeah, I had to be very careful, use blue ice here to get myself enough speed. Uh, these water streams can be fairly tricky. So I would make sure your water stream works before you build the rest of this, because this stuff right here is going to be the majority of the work, placing all these blocks. Another aspect of the water streams is that whenever you're moving back and then you're going to be breaking vines, you want to have a trap door up here. So when I come along and hit that trap door, I'll be able to reach the very back vine. Like if, I, if I'm just like backed up against the wall, I can't actually reach that. I'm pressing backwards now. So yeah, I can't reach that vine. So yeah, when, just be careful whenever you move backwards, then are going to break vines to always have that trap door there. So on uh, for the collection, for the main collection, which is going to come off these water streams here, I just use hoppers because they're easier. And if you're worried about the client lag, it's only about like 1.5 MSPT uh, for this whole setup, which is like 400 something hoppers. Um, but as an alternative, if you don't want to use hoppers, you can have a water stream below here if you use the fence gates. Um, yeah, I would set it up like this where you have eight long there, then another eight long here. Just move down. I think it's a lot easier to set up this way. And as I mentioned before, you can use, uh, you can use sea pickles instead of the trap doors here. They're a little bit easier to place and probably less expensive if you actually got a sea pickle farm. But uh, sea pickles, they do have the disadvantage that if you don't have a block here, then it's just going to be destroyed. I also might have said before that you could use uh, turtle eggs here, but it turns out they do have a problem, is they can block the items from falling down. I thought they would be fine, uh, but yeah, I don't think you even want to consider doing that. But also then flower pots, those would be a good option, I believe. But yeah, they uh, they can't they can't be hovering in air. From below, the hoppers just look like this. There's not much to it. They just all come in from 
the outer edges and then just go to uh, go to this. Uh, it's just a wall block here, but you probably have some large amount of chest storage down here. So another part of the collection is for these first vines on the edge. Like there's vines that could land in this water stream and just kind of travel along until they get to a hopper. So like I have a couple of fill safe hoppers right here just to make sure everything is always collected. If you do plan to build this, you can always just start with one side and then do the other side later because it really is quite a lot to build. But this is definitely probably way overpowered. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make something that's pretty good with a good balance between like looks and buildability and speed. And that's always a challenge with Minecraft is like getting all those three factors together because you can easily make a really super crazy farm and it looks like it just looks terrible. And then you just use it once and you never come back to it. So I think this is, uh, this is pretty good in all those respects. So I also wanted to cover some of my previous attempts before I just went with the traditional method of water streams. So this right here is a very slow flying machine that can move in two directions. And yeah, you just sit here and break the vines. And this was looking pretty good. I only really wanted something for single player, so I thought, what the heck, just try a flying machine, even though everybody says not to do it. But I think it was when I tried running on carpet that I ran into problems. Uh, eventually the, the client, the player would just like fall off. The, I guess the player lags for a second, occasionally. And yeah, the server moves ahead and the block gets inside of them. And yeah, the whole multiplayer model in Minecraft is not very good. So you get this glitchiness and that's why people either use minecarts in flying machines or water streams. But I thought it was at least kind of worth mentioning because of the way I did this. So it's just a, it's just a basic flying machine here, moves back and forth. And it's all synchronized correctly so that it can move back quickly, which is what I wanted actually. So yeah, it gives two pulses here, which you can see is happening. So it's one pulse at the beginning, then another pulse, uh, seven redstone ticks after that. And that just makes it move slowly like this, where it moves forward and then kicks out this and pulls it back. And it might be redstone uh, update order related, I'm not sure, but I wasn't gonna develop that any further. Uh, another attempt I had here, this is El Mango's slow flying machine that he showed in a uh, basically slime block tutorial video. And it works basically the same way, but it doesn't use that, um, it doesn't use the redstone along the way. The re that would be a problem when you got to out to longer distances because of synchronization issues. But anyway, yeah, this can move back and forth slowly. But like after using one of these for for some amount of time, like I would eventually always just kicked out. But yeah, there's a good reason. And <laughs> yeah, when it comes to general advice like this, you shouldn't usually just think that you, you can outsmart them. People have figured this stuff out most of the time. So anyway, I think that's gonna do it for this video. I will provide my calculations as well as a world download in the description. So anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.